The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Cosmos. Hello and welcome to another episode of Dad vs. Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. Megan, what are we playing today? We are playing adventure games in the dungeon. This is from Cosmos. Yeah, this is not an escape room per se. No. This is more of a creature and adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's broken out over three different chapters and it has multiple endings depending on the choices you make. It does. So, check it out. So this is our first in the adventure game series. This is the dungeon. Um, I don't know that I would call this an escape room as much as I would call it as a choose your own, choose your own adventure, adventure. Really uh, because there's no timer. There is the helper app. You are um, trying to escape though. We are, well, in this one we are trying yeah, to escape. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, in this adventure story we are. However, the other ones, I don't know. But this one, yeah, definitely. You are trying to escape dungeon because you don't want to end up like that guy. Yeah, so we're not really giving anything away by showing you this first location, um, but I do want to show you kind of uh, what your locations are going to be because you're going to build out from this, and you'll notice that there's all these numbers that are associated with that. Um, whenever you try to, or you do your investigation, so like let's say we want to investigate 501, we would look in the, uh, what do they call it, the adventure book. The adventure book, the dungeon adventure book there. We would look for... Uh, the entry on 501 and then we'd read that obviously we're not going to do that right now because yeah. we don't want to spoil it for you and you can see there's various things that you can look at in the room uh, you can also use objects that you find mm -hmm. uh, with locations so let's say that I found a can of cat food and a can opener because that is the example that they use in the book so yeah. it's okay that's not relevant to the game whatsoever and those no those cards are going to have numbers because you'll see over here in the uh, plastic bag there we have what they say about 83 um, cards? We have 83 cards yeah adventure yeah. cards here and so not all numbers are represented but it starts at number 10 yeah um, and a card it's going to tell you in the book hey take card 24 and 52 add yeah. those together so then you would look for code what over 24 52 what i just said and you'd be like oh hey so that says hey that did something and then you correspond with that so you always look for these codes none of the codes are ever going to match so you can't just like read through the book in order you got to so, flip through the pages yeah so there could be codes that are uh, four digits long, four digits, five digits, digits, because you could take an object and use it with one of the numbers that are on the card, or you might have a six-digit number. Six-digit number. I do have a small complaint about the six-digit number, though, at least for this book. There are only so many six-digit codes, so when you get to that section, you're like, oh, okay. You might accidentally, like, peek ahead, which, you I mean, you're not supposed to. I'll only try to look for the entry you really right. need to look at. But like when you're looking for the certain code number, you might see that and be like, oh, well, I know that. And you might not need that number for well, an hour later in the game. But there there is a remedy it. for that. And that yes. remedy is the, helper app. the app. Uh, because what you can do is you can just type that number in. So let's just well, say... This is choose 100. Oops. Yeah. Your introduction can do that at least. You wake up from an uneasy sleep. It's going to read everything. In the dark, your eyes wide open. You still have goosebumps all over your body. And that, well, that narrator actually has a really cool voice. Yeah. Passageway. And then there was a noise? Or was it a scream? That's what woke you. Now all is quiet again, almost. Yeah, so that's actually really kind of cool. We can pause that or stop it or whatever. Yeah. And I know when we played through, Megan didn't want to listen to that. He was uh, a little because bit too she could, slow. <laughs> she reads a lot faster than that. I do, but it's exactly the same exact text that you see in the book. It's just going to read it a little bit more dramatic flair. But, you know, if you have someone in your group that's, you know, really into wanting to get into the story and kind of act it out or, you know, add some inflection, you could totally do it. I just didn't want you doing that because I remember I, how you read kids' books to me. <laughs> I actually like this. The other thing you can do is uh, instead of punching those codes in, you can hit this little question mark. And okay. this takes you to the help function. Now, I want to show you that it'll tell you, you know, spoilers. Uh, 
you could learn some things. Uh -huh. So yeah, let's just say, go ahead, yes. And then we can type in wherever we want to hint. So let's say we wanted to hint on 100 mm -hmm. and we just hit go and it would come up and it would tell us something. This one says no entry because there is nothing. Yeah. But that's how that would work. So I just wanted to show you that instance. If you also don't have the app, all of your hint codes are in the back of the rule book. Um, so you can glance back in there. Nothing's really too spoilery. It'll be like, oh, combine 54 and 310, you'll receive 88 which is not, I just made that up, but like, it'll tell you like things like that, or I'll be like, hey, go to this room, use this where you should find this item, and then this will help you at this code number. So it is pretty helpful. That's not too spoilery unless you actually start to start figuring out what the numbers go to, but yeah. it's kind of nice. Uh, the locations are these big cards that have the, the big letters on there. Like I said, this is going to, it's going to tell you, hey, take uh, location B and put it below or to the right or above, above. wherever uh, in relation to A. Yeah. And that's gonna give you a new location that you can mm -hmm. uh, explore. It's gonna have new numbers, new objects, that sort of thing. And so, Although these cards are in alphabetical order, just so you can sort through them quickly, they are not gonna come up in that same order. So basically what you're gonna do is this card is gonna be in, on the table just and you're center. gonna build a basically Castle. your environment all the way out around that. Yeah. So that's pretty much kind of how the game is played. Mm -hmm. Each person is going to have a character that they're going to choose. Megan, you chose... I chose Cassandra, um, mainly because when we got our poor little meeples, um, we were going to be blue and green. And I was like, oh, all right, my blue already came with a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> Which, ironically, is what kept happening to my character because uh, she kept getting shot at. <laughs> well... Not necessarily shot. Well, you can. She, there's a lot of things hurt. that can happen. And then I am a Koro. I'm the strong. What was I your was thing? You were the attent attentive. attentive. Yeah. Yeah. I was a Koro. I, so I, I was. I was the red that, player. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to take those little meeple dudes, and <clears throat> as you're exploring the locations, you can just put your meeple on that area, just so all the other players uh, know which mm -hmm. number that you are taking care of so that they don't repeat. Because that is your torrent. You're going to go and be like, hey, I want to see Furio 1. I'm going to go there, read the entry, do whatever the card says, gain a card, lose a card, do whatever. Okay, next person. Until yep. you decide, hey, let's move out. Yep. So that pretty much is the overview on how the game is played. So yep. since we can't actually show you the gameplay, uh, we are just going to skip right ahead <laughs> to what we think. Uh, I want to start off by saying that this game kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I really like this game. I thought it would just be kind of a, hey, you know, this is kind of a neat game. We really enjoyed playing this. I was worried if you were going to like this or not. Because I remember when I heard about it, I was like, yes, I really want to play this. I really enjoyed Choose Your Own Adventure books um, growing up. I have a couple of them. And well, hey, I had them too when I was well, a kid. Okay, well, you never really said that, so <laughs> I didn't know until just now. Thanks. Um, but I really enjoyed those. I liked, you know, going through. I would even start reading it and like change it, and then read it again, do different decisions. And this one, you can't really do that. But like we said, when we finish, we'll keep this game if we want. You know, five years later, bring it out. We won't remember maybe everything so it'd be kind of interesting i could bring it out next week and i won't remember yeah that's true but like you know we won't remember exactly how did we get this item we might get different items because we didn't even go through all of the cards um so that would be really cool i really like this i kind of thought it was a little bit D, D ish where you were you know going to different rooms getting different things you know exploring that way because like you said it wasn't an escape room kind of like um exit or you know the unlock series where those were, you know, you're kind of timed, you have to do things, you know, rather quickly to get through it. This one, we took our time. They say each, um, like, chapter takes about 90 minutes or so. It probably took us about an hour-ish, yeah. a little, maybe a little bit more. Um, just by the time we started getting through, chapter two gave us a little bit more trouble. Um, we had to go and explore a lot more and figure out what the heck do we do with our items, but we got there at the end. And, and let's talk a little bit about what a chapter is. Essentially, a chapter is, here is a section of the story. Mm -hmm. When you finish it, you it, will, it will basically uh, kind of has a little cleanup. And it tells you, oh, you know, you might want to take a picture or, or make some notes on how the layout is. Uh -huh. You get these baggies. So essentially what you can do is you can save your game state. Yeah. And which is what we did because 
a week ago was when we started this. Mm -hmm. We played through chapter one and then we boxed it up where we were at and we didn't get it out again until uh, earlier today. Yeah, we got super busy and we're just like, yeah, well, we have that game, but we don't have to like sit there and finish it off. So it was kind of nice having that picked up right exactly where we left off. The cards tell you, hey, this is where your story ended. This is where you're going next. And here's how to get started again. So it was and, really nice. And the the game, you know, it you can do kind of your own thing, but yeah. you are also kind of on rails because you know, you only have so, so many, many things games. that you can look at in that room. Um, and you know you have to get out of that room. Well, and you know that, yeah, in order to continue the story, yeah. you need to find other things to, to be able to continue it. Um, there are certain um, entries, though, it'll be like, hey, are you sure you really want to do this? Or do you want to do something else? Because it'll take you then to two different entries. So that is kind of cool. And then other times it'll be like, oh, do you have card 75? Nope. Okay, we'll read something else. So right. it was also dependent on how much you've explored in a certain room before you've moved on. You might need to then go back and do some more exploring to like then complete something else. So you kind of do need a decent-ish memory because <laughs> I know we were at one point like, how did we get this clue? We know we need to do this, but like what code and what room were we in? So, and we did take notes. We did take notes, yeah. And there's a lot of the classic puzzles, you know, decipher this. Yeah, like, those are cool. Here's a codex and here's some code that you found. Mm -hmm. So what is the message that's yeah. here? Or there were hidden images in one. Yeah. Uh, some things will set you up yeah. for other things. Uh, like, for instance, I found an entry that was in a book. Yeah. That, uh, and it's it, it's a special kind of book. And it, it says, kind of book. this person did this. And for so like, then when you stumble thing. across that, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I remember yeah. seeing this. Hey, I mean, I need to either do this mm -hmm. or not do this. Not do that, yeah. Uh, so that was, that was really cool. Um, you pick up more friends along the way too, at least in this you one. You do. So for a two player, kind of having those NPCs was kind of cool because then we're like, oh, we're building our party. We have more people to help us get the heck out of here. So that was really cool. Yeah. And they can affect, you know, your storyline too. Oh, if you have so and so, they can help you with this. If not, well, you're kind of out of luck. Right and now. speaking of storyline, um, there's four different uh, endings. Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's four, yeah. There's, there's five ending cards, but there's four right. different endings depending how you get there with what you have. The last one just kind of tells you how to calculate your points, mm -hmm. which in this case, we ended up with 41 points, yep. which you said was actually it's pretty respectable. It's five stars, yeah. Um, when you look at the back of the book, there's zero to nines, one star, 10 to 19 is two, 20 to 29 is three, 30 to 39 is four, 40 to 49 is five, and if you have 50 or more, you're outstanding. We were just amazing. But yeah. you know, that's pretty good though. I, thought that was really good considering how we did on some of the unlock or exit ones we're like oh we didn't do so hot and as you find certain things uh it'll tell you oh these are going to be worth points at the end of the, mm -hmm. the round uh or they're going to be worth negative points if you yeah. have this uh item this thing yeah um and I, like i said i don't want to give too much away mm -hmm. um you might not even encounter that in your gameplay so it's all dependent too and there's a lot of things because it's based on the choices you make yeah you may decide to open door a instead of door b and that takes you down a whole different path. Uh, yeah. Now, as far as the story goes, you may still end up in the same place, but how you got there is gonna be a little different. Mm -hmm. The resources that you may have picked up along the way may be different or yeah. maybe non-existent. Uh, so there's a lot of variability there based on like I said, the decisions that you make. Because we learned that um, I was a little bit rash, I think, in one decision. Um, and then I was like, oh, we never really got to explore that before something happened. And I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't have jumped ahead. And, you know, I got really excited. I was like, oh, let's go ahead and look at this. And I was like, well, I can't go back now. So kind of hurt myself there. But I don't think it really affected our gameplay too much. And just like uh, real life, uh, watch where you stick your hands. Yeah. Because uh, be, be you careful. may be bitten or worse. Worse. You remember in The Mummy 2, you know, towards the end when he stuck his hand in there? Yeah, the, the you, don't, guy. you don't really want to do that. Yeah. yeah. We're quoting The Mummy, too, a lot in this one, The Mummy Returns. There was a lot of quotable things in it. I will say, though, the adventure um, book is actually kind of funny. Um, just when I was glancing for codes, I saw one entry. It was like, you're not Chuck Norris. Come on. I was like, what? I was like, that's not even, like, relevant to this game. But it was it was kind of humorous. And some of the text and dialogue is kind of tongue-in-cheek with some things. There is an item we got. And I was like, what the heck is this? Like, what are we doing with this? And we're like, oh, okay, that's kind of funny. So. Well, and here's another thing. Uh, an item that you may pick up at the very beginning of the game, you may not use until the yeah. very end of the game. I know, so we got something really early on. I'm like, why do we still have this? And, and even like, the oh. locations. Uh, you're going to yeah. find that you found something when you were in 
chapter one or uh-huh. chapter three that goes back to a location you haven't been in since chapter one. Yeah. Uh, and now you can do something, um, you know, in that location. So uh, I really like that aspect of it. It did give you a sense of adventure. Yeah. Uh, when you were doing this, very story driven. Um, the story so the, was so really So the narrative is really good. Like I said, listening to this guy talk, I yeah. thought it was actually pretty good. And if you're doing this, playing this on your own, I would definitely uh, use the app over reading definitely. it in the book. Um, or if you just want to be a little bit more immersive and time is not of the essence, yeah, I would also use the app too. I was saying... Um, and I, it does keep a little track of, oh, you looked at this yeah. and this and this and this. I was saying, though, like I think my group of friends that I do D&D with would really enjoy this type of game um, if like the DM didn't really want to structure a session. Like This would be really fun. He could still be the one to kind of read the book because he has a lot more dramatic flair and kind of gets into it and all. And I think our group would have a lot more fun with it, too, because it is structured. It's already pre-set up with like a pre-built campaign. So. Which friend is that? Robbie. Robbie? Yeah. Robbie Robbie was a good DM. So yeah. Not Nick. <laughs> Nick was not the DM. But, uh, no, I like I said, this really caught me off off guard uh, and by surprise. I really, really enjoyed this. I'm I'm really looking forward to playing the next one. I am, too. Um, and it does kind of give you a hint um, on the bottom, which I can show you this. Um, so you kind of don't see any of the cards when you peek. And it's like, oh, you want to play again? Or, hey, you've completed this one. You can go ahead and move to the next one, which is the monochrome ink. So that's kind of cool. I don't know. It looks really cool. It says it's a thriller. Yeah. Kind of a little scary. I think you're trying to break into monochrome ink. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. It looks cool. It looks kind of like a heist type thing. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit of comparison between, say, this and the Escape series. Now, we played two Escapes. Ex- or exits, exit, I'm sorry. Yeah. We played two exits. Um, the first thing I did when we opened this up, too, because of how we play exit, I was looking over the box very heavily, trying to see, do I need to know anything? Are there any clues? There's no insert in this, so like that's not relevant. But I was like, oh, we literally used every single aspect of the game. I wondered if that was going to come into play here. Not really. You're not tearing anything up. You're writing on your own notes. You're not like writing on the cards or doing anything. It's all here. And what you see right here you don't like nothing more and the biggest thing i think is it's not timed not timed yeah. uh, like exit exit Most has tracks. a time uh so you can pretty much go at your own pace uh you know feel free to explore everything uh because there's really mm-hmm. unless you find clues that tell you not to look at certain things or uh yeah. and you'll find that out when you play it but that's one of the things i really liked about the game was um a lot of the classic you know escape type uh, puzzles yeah. are in there. You know, like, use this to solve this. Or here's here's something that you're going to use on yeah. this puzzle. Um, and we didn't get to that puzzle for a while later. And then we're like, but what is the code for this? Like, we couldn't figure it out. And then I was like, oh, hey, let's try this. Like, just out of the blue and actually ended up working. So that was kind of cool. Uh, actually, that was pretty smart. Because I was just like, wait, what if we did this? And I was like, oh, that's three numbers and we need three numbers of the six digit code and it worked so it's really cool yeah because we were kind of taking things a little literal and we were and you're like oh wait a minute if it if you actually don't take it as literal yeah, was... it's this which is kind of the obvious thing and Megan's yeah. like uh i think this is it and we put it that worked. in and like oh yeah that's what it was it was really cool though i enjoy you know doing all this i'm like i kind of ran it because i was the one reading through the books and now my throat really hurts because we did two yeah. chapters today but this was a, a lot this was an excellent story it's really good um, yeah because once we got to chapter two and then it was like a cliffhanger i'm like we gotta go to chapter three and it was like reading the book because you know you're kind of reading along and and here's the story and this is what you know so far and then you have a little twist in chapter yeah. two uh, which is kind of, you know, like the second act is when you kind of, you know, Amp it up. it's the Empire Strikes Back, you know, it's the <laughs> end of, the, the, well, the end of, you know, Star Wars A New Hope, you know, we blew up the Death Star, we're feeling good, yay, and then, you know, Empire Strikes Back happens as act two, yay. and everything goes to crap, <laughs> and then in act three, okay. you're yeah. kind of coming along, and everything kind of comes back together, uh, you know, and, and you win in the end, which we did uh, we, did we did really well. Uh, we did you pull in some lore from other fandoms like Harry Potter. We did. Uh, which was kind of funny. Uh, we kind of did it jokingly at first because one of the cards were like... I, I like, knew oh. as soon as I we got the card what it was. Yeah, and I'm just like, oh man. Like, I was like, I can't not quote Harry Potter. And if I do quote it, it's going to be very obvious what this card is and I don't want to give it away. But it was just like perfect. And uh, Shrek was another fandom that uh, was kind of... Hinted at a little bit. Did we? In this. 
Well, I didn't call it out, but I was totally thinking it. Oh, with the... Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay, I see that. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, yeah, we don't really quote Shrek often, but yeah, that did kind of come in here. I don't know, it was really interesting. I liked it. I liked the theming. I think it's really cool. The artwork, you know, is really cool on these cards. There's a lot you can actually explore just in the art, and that yeah. kind of helps you clue into, which I think is nice. And while, you know, like when you're playing the exit or, or some of the other escape room type things, mm -hmm. you might really want to have a magnifying glass to look things over. You don't need to. Well, well you there's can, a couple but... of things, because as you uncover clues or get items it might say this and when you get to a location and you might be looking at something that kind of goes along that with that is true. you might want to look closely before you yeah. make hasty decisions and stick your hands where you shouldn't yeah don't do that don't run into rooms just willy-nilly because then that gets you shot because <laughs> and, and i, I will say this so there is a health system for there your is. characters yeah um but usually at the end of a chapter, you heal up. well, or at the beginning of the next chapter, you heal up. So if you lose a health point, it's kind of like a video game, which I thought was kind of cool. So it's like, oh, if you lose a heart, you lose a heart. But if you ever get to the point where you're all uh, black hearts there and you have to lose something, then you lose that for the rest of the game. It, it goes back in the box. It is funny, though, in the rule book. It was like, oh, well, if you would happen to like be on your very last heart and you know you would happen to take a damage oh one of your fellow adventurers will heroically dive in front of you to take that hit and then you're okay because you're never actually going to die like you're just going to be really low in health but i thought that was kind of funny though so again just kind of the humor in it which i enjoy yeah so i definitely give this two thumbs up highly recommend it definitely it's a very cheap price point so and there's um, a lot of game in the small box i mean know? you're going to spend you know, like i said a few hours playing this mm -hmm. and then when you get done like i said you can put it on the shelf for a couple of years get it back out yeah. play it with some different people yeah um, see i really want to get this to the table with more people you loan this to somebody and say hey you know check this out mm -hmm. uh you know and they get it back to you you know like in two years like you know <laughs> when you loan friends stuff sometimes it doesn't come back right away no um but no this this is really good highly recommend this definitely yeah. uh, and like i said we're really looking forward to playing the next in the adventure game series mm -hmm. So that is Adventure Games, The Dungeon. Show you that really cool artwork one last time. And we will catch you guys next time. Bye. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.